how you doing how you feeling great amazing how am i yeah trucking on trucking on in trucking on up trucking on out um a little bit annoyed i think <laughs> at the last couple of days mostly due to my beloved manchester united completely capitulating in the transfer market we seem to have absolutely no idea um about how we want to move forward as a club actually i think we do let me let me revise that i think internally the club have basically proved without any shadow of a doubt they didn't, they're not interested about being a good football club or about winning trophies or about creating memorable nights in europe right or about having some of the best players play for our badge they're more concerned about ensuring that we have the revenue that allows the owners to siphon off cash from our club without investing anything back into the club itself that's what the glazers and the ed woodward regime has basically subjected us to but i think unfortunately some fans have only come to that realization recently i guess they've kind of finally woken up to the fact that maybe the glazers aren't really interested in making us great again they're interested in making sure we make money and we cover their nut and we allow for them to go on their you know on their lavish holidays you know over the summers or you know during the year i guess in always shape and intense purposes but for us fans on the outside it's just hard to deal with man to see someone to see clubs that finish under you know behind us so, yeah to see clubs that finished outside the top four investing way more into their squad than we are to see the champions looking at adding a world-class midfielder in tiago into a team in order to give them the extra push to maybe allow them to do the double you know um again this season you know the potential of liverpool winning the champions league and the premier league is really high especially if they are able to bring in someone like a tiago who completely changes everything about that team he allows them to do so much going forward he allows club to rotate um without a significant drop in quality especially in that heart of the midfield position and it just really opens up their attack in, in a whole different dimension i'm sure most of you have seen um the liverpool v leeds game no one can deny that most Salah looks a lot hungrier a lot trim maybe it's the haircut but he looks in you know he looks like he worked out the entire time that he was in lockdown he hasn't missed a step he's come back raring and hungry to go so imagine you know Thiago sitting behind a front three of Firmino, Mane and Salah right spraying balls uh, popping balls over the top and just generally being a creative force that he is whilst Man United have effectively only signed one player so far and recalled what was it, um, Dean Henderson and given him a bumper contract. So there's problems everywhere, really. None of it makes sense. Looking at it now, you're thinking to yourself, why would you, why would you get Dean Henderson back without letting Romero go? Doesn't make any sense. Why would you then get Dean Henderson back and then give him a new contract that effectively makes him what it basically forces the manager to play him right if you give a if you give your second string keeper a hundred and twenty thousand plus or whatever the you know the purported fee is it's very difficult to keep him on the bench i would imagine it's very difficult to say like hey you don't play the majority of the season he has to play what most of the cup games he has to play most of maybe the group stages of european competitions maybe i don't know so that causes unnecessary pressure then you've got the defence, you've got Maguire who didn't pull up any trees last season, you need a new centre-back that you're clearly shopping for, I'm not sure what that's done to the confidence of the players playing behind there or playing in that position, you've got players that are injury-prone but good in terms of Eric Bailly, can't be relied upon, same with Luke Shaw, you've got unproven quality in Brandon Williams who was given a new contract which I don't understand either, you could have easily kind of waited and not given him anything um, just, for the sake, just for the sake that he's a young player and he still has a lot to prove. Um, I think the fact that he came in, hit the ground running at the beginning of the season and kind of tailed off is evident, you know, is basically proof of what most young players go through. They sort of kind of peter out towards the end of the season. And the fact that he wasn't able to rest, the fact that he was basically played throughout the season because most of the players, the, the person that should have been playing in Luke Shaw was consistently injured or sometimes not on form. So you have all these poles in our team that need to be addressed. And the one sign we have made in Van der Beek wasn't necessarily the one position that we were crying out for. Don't get me wrong, we still need the option. I, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot more um, calm when we have to sub off a Bruno or a Pogba to bring Van der Beek on. Then have to bring on Pereira or have to bring on a wine matter, especially in the current system we're playing. 
And yeah, I still look at Rashford and think, you know, has he actually recovered from his supposed broken back injury? Um, has it, Was he carrying another knock? Did he still have that niggling ankle or knee injury he had that he was still struggling with? Um, are we hoping that Martial goes the entire season without a major injury, which is unlikely considering his injury record too? Daniel James is suffering in confidence and not what he was prior to um, the lockdown. Just so many questions. But again, all of this could be relieved. Um, there could be a lot of, of good feeling going into a new season, especially going into this weekend's fixture with the additions of some quality signings, right? We are meant to be in for Regulon, but it looks like Tottenham have probably um, stolen the march on us there by simply offering the money that Real Madrid want and agreeing to their terms. I don't agree. They need to just spin they're putting out there they're putting out so much spin about oh we didn't want to sign him because of the buyback clause da, 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 da. don't believe the spin Man United are, are really Man United under kind of the current regime are really good at never addressing things publicly or directly with the fans they always kind of go through second third parties and you know the recent interview that um Ed Woodward done or somebody from the club done with um someone i forgot who it was with and they didn't release the entire interview in audio format they just released um some 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 transcripts right um from the interview like you know carefully chosen quotes they're very careful about who they speak to and how they speak in public but when it comes to putting out information to alleviate the fears or to you know twist the narrative to their favor they're very quick with it especially with the hiring of this new PR guy that the Glazers or is it Edward specifically hired I think my main my main night that kind of that Wally from the Sunday papers on Sky Sports that you know it's got that voice it talks like an intellect but he's a bit of a div that dude right He's obviously spinning it and, you know, using his press contacts to feed certain stories, put certain stories out there. And now we're in a position where they're making us believe as if the only reason why we didn't sign Regulon is because of the buyback clause. That was a major thing. And again, if you're a big club, if you're United and you actually want to um, steal a march, you actually want to get closer to your opponents, get closer to your title rivals, right? Because we're talking about United, we're not talking about no Champions League um, qualifying nonsense. If you actually want to close the gap on the title winners, you just sign Regulon and you deal with the buyback clause later when it when it, when, when it raises ugly head again. Or like a big club, you buy him in the hope that even if it's 30 million for one season or for two seasons, it's going to pay dividends because he might effectively be the difference in terms of finishing second and third. He might be a difference between, you know, um, qualifying for, you know, um, what you call it, getting out of the group stages, maybe getting to the last stage of, of the European Cups. He might even be the difference between actually winning it, right? Like, so a 30 million in investment plus his wages for two seasons and you get the opportunity to finish consecutively in Champions League for two seasons in a row and you get a good couple of cup runs you might win a couple of trophies here and there I think it's more than worth it and then like a big club you'd also then make the adjustments or you make the necessary precautions to, to have like a list of backup people in case he does get recalled in case he does get a bit homesick and wants to go back to Madrid that's what you'd do you wouldn't just throw your hands up and say oh they want to buy back close so we're not going to get him that's a cop out. It's a cop out because they don't want to address the situation. They don't want to address the issues. They don't want to. Um, they don't want to make the investment as necessary because if they do, they're going to be then judged in a whole different way. Maybe that's a thing. It's a bit odd to be honest because you'd imagine the one manager that they could get away with actually backing and having no kickback and having no kind of pushback from the fans would be Oli. Every other manager felt like they could have had you know fans could be within their rights to basically voice their concerns about why this manager is getting the purse strings right whether it was Louis van Gaal, David Moyes or Jose Mourinho there will be fans out there that'll be like you know what I don't trust this guy with the money but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer so far whether or not it's through pure luck or because he's a good at actually identifying players he's actually been he's actually his record in transfer market has been pretty good for the most part he's obviously has this new cultural reset paradigm that he's kind of adopting which you know i think again is a lot of fluff but if it's to believe on surface level and he actually is prioritizing the character and the makeup of the player as opposed to just their technical skills and their branding capabilities and marketing potential and he's actually favoring the person over the you know the the media conglomerate then that is amazing right but if that's the case and he's actually been able to prove that his approach is maybe working why not trust him with the money and then if he fails he's got no one else to blame but himself right that would be the great tactic from the from the glazers but they don't do that instead 
we just got the same routine that happened under Louis van Gaal, same routine that happened under Jose Mourinho, where we qualify for Europe, and then suddenly the money dries up. Suddenly we're not signing more players. Suddenly the holes in our team get completely get kind of laid to bear. And it's again, it's an unfortunate position to be in because I think if you're an owner of a club, it's one of those things where you start to realize that the more success that you actually get on the pitch, the more you have to invest in the actual team, right? But then I guess the hope is, if you're if you're one of the successful clubs, is that the consist the consistency of you performing on the biggest stage is going to allow you to kind of open up your earning potential, whether it's from brands or sponsors or just generally from just uh, you know attendance money and prize money for just you know um, getting to various stages in the competition. That's what the hope is. But the unfortunate reality is that the more successful you are, you you are the more money you have to pile in the only way you don't have to pile in money is if you just become like a mid-tier sort of premier league club that's stable with you know a pretty good infrastructure like a look like a good example would be like a burnley right or even like a leicester now they've probably kind of crept into that sort of zone at the moment they're probably never going to challenge for a title again but they're daring about you know to finish top six um burnley probably daring about to finish top 10 that's the only place where you probably won't need to invest that much money. But even Leicester, they've signed like two or three players. Burnley are probably going to be signing a couple more players. You just can't sit still, especially in the Premier League. It just doesn't work in football, in life in general. So to see these guys essentially run our club into the ground has been distressing. Again, it's something that I try not to think too much about because, again, what can I do? How can I affect change in no way, shape or form? I cannot. It would be nice to see our fan base be a little bit more united around you know, no pun intended around what the issue is. Um, because I think there are some fans out there still who are kind of have this delusion that as long as we sign Sancho, we'll be okay. And I'm here to tell you that's not the, that's not true. We still need a defensive midfielder. We still need a competent right winger or, you know, maybe even a, an option on the left, depending whatever you look at. We need a left, I can give a centre back, right? Those are still some glaring holes in our team that need to be addressed. We can't go into another season with our backup centre-backs being Bailly, Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo and co, right? That just shouldn't be the case. We need to have better options. Now, of course, I'm going to say, hey, Solskjaer spent 80 million on Harry Maguire and didn't work out. Cool, but you're going to have to stick with him. You know, he's England's captain. Um, He can do no wrong. You're going to have to stick with him anyway. That's one position out of the way. Lindelof and Bailly are going to have to scrap for the second spot, but they haven't been convincing whenever they've had a run in the team. So you have an open slot there for somebody to take. And yeah, you can't tell me just signing Jadon Sancho is going to be enough because it isn't. Because there's still the possibility that if he gets injured and alongside with along with a new other striker up front, our team completely changes the makeup of how we attack or how we approach teams. It completely changes. And again, I'm not even sold on his counter-attacking football that we supposedly are playing now. That That's not really working for me in that regard because, you know, the United I remember best are the ones that kept the ball. You know, the possession-based United that were stretching teams, pulling them apart, you know, switching the play left and right um, and just bringing, you know, using different weapons to defeat opponents in different sort of ways. This approach where we just, you know, we sit back and hit, hit teams on the counter all the time is really odd, especially considering we don't do it as nearly as efficiently or proficiently as we did in the past so loads of issues there to really um decipher I'll be interested to see how Oli Gunnar Solskjaer approaches the interview on the weekend will he use as an opportunity to like speak openly about what's going on or will he just do what he usually does and just kind of you know be a company man and just you know kind of nod along and agree what's going on and then maybe privately you know start throwing some phones around the office but i would like to see him publicly come out and say something a little bit more forceful than what he said previously again you don't have to throw your employer under the bus but he needs to be clear in that we need some improvements if you want to build upon last season right not not that we're not going to have a good season this season i don't think so i don't think we're going to finish as low as six as some people are saying i still think it'll be it's not going to be easy for us to finish our top four if we don't improve our squad but he needs to come out and say hey we need to if we want to build on what we have last year from last season we need to add to our squad and team it's a, it's just a it's not even up for debate it just has to happen and if it doesn't happen we are f-u-c-k-e-d'd that's what I think anyway. But again, what do I know? So 